Welcome everyone um, to our webinar about the conventional gate module number two. Thank you much, very much for joining us this afternoon to this webinar. Um, my name is Niels Betzler. I'm a product manager for life sciences at Qualysys. And I'm, I've, been, I've been with Qualysys for more than 10 years now and working with motion capture in many different ways. And I'm really happy to um, talk about this topic today because it's uh, something I'm very passionate about, um, about making data processing easy, making it um, device uh, independent and uh, making it, it accessible to as many people as possible. I'm glad that um, I'm joined by um, Fabien this afternoon. Um, so please present yourself briefly, Fabien. Hello. So hello everyone. So I'm Fabien Leboeuf, uh, I'm, and I'm the technical manager of the of the Gate Laboratory of Nantes Hospital in France, and I have been working on the Commercial Gate Model Two project uh, for four years at Salford University. Thank you, Fabien. More on that later. And then um, I'm also really happy that um, I have a whole team helping out today. Um, Vincent, Stan and Nibor, um, my colleague who will be helping with demos and also answering questions on the chat. And you can see uh, Vincent on the video there. Um, he's joined us from our lab in Gothenburg so that we'll be able to do some live recordings as well. Um, some technical uh, comments here. Um, you can expand the go to webinar control panel by clicking the orange arrow and there you have some sound settings. So if you can't hear us, if you can just read this, please check the sound settings here and make sure you've got the right audio device set up. And the second important thing is there is a questions panel in GoToMeeting. And if you have any question during the webinar, just type it here. It will only go to our staff. It's only sent to us, not to everyone. And we will do our best to answer questions as quickly as possible. Um, but we know um, there can be a lot of questions and um, also some tricky questions that we need to discuss first. And um, those ones we will answer by email afterwards. So no question is lost. Um, and there will probably be also some questions that are interesting uh, for everyone or that we want to discuss at the very end of the webinar. So um, a little bit about the project background. The uh, conventional gate module model goes back many, many years. Uh, Fabien will talk more about this. And um, in uh, the year 2014, um, Richard Baker initiated a project at University of Salford to work on CGM2, which is something like the next version of CGM. And uh, we followed this closely. And um, in 2019, um, we started a project to make this new um, CGM also easily accessible for Qualysys customers. The partners in this project were, of course, Qualysys ourselves, then the University of Salford, um, primarily Fabien and also Richard Jones. Um, then our quality distributor in France and Benelux, Trinoma, and the and University of Geneva, um, which provided sort of the end user perspective um, because um, this is linked to the um, gate lab at the university hospital there. So um, everyone um, has been coming together in this project for um, almost a year now. And this spring, we've launched a public example um, that we'll also show today. And um, soon we'll also launch um, a version of our gate module with CGM2 embedded. But before we look at that, um, I would like to hand over to uh, Fabien to give us a brief history and background about the um, CGM. So I'll um, just... Here we go. Okay, so now over to you, Fabian. You should be able to click here. Okay, thank you, Nias. So, can I handle? Can you give me control, please? Okay. Oh, uh... So, first of all, I think uh, we need to define what is the commercial gate model. Okay, so these terms came from uh, the Professor Richard Becker, who used it uh, during uh, his tutorial session. And uh, the conventional gate model is a generic name for the series of models developed during the early 80s from the work of Davis and Cabada. You may find different appellations uh, of its model in the literature, uh, the Newington model, the Ellenize model, and the last one uh, was distributed in 1998 and is called the plug-in gate model. Okay, so the plugin gate model that we renamed the CGM01 is composed of uh, 16 optoelectronic markers placed over the lower limb. 
and, and it's a top-down uh, hierarchical model, which the pelvic segment is the root. Uh, it's uh, from the local position of the hip joint center that you locate the knee joint center, then the ankle joint center. Uh, it's important to notice that the CGM1, the plugging gate model, used the so-called direct kinematic method as a default uh, segmental tracking method. Uh, this, in pro this approach is simple and consists uh, in defining the segmental coordinate system from the trajectory of free marker on a frame-by-frame -frame basis. There is absolutely in the, uh, no optimization in this approach like the least-square optimization. So the CGM, the CGM1, became popular in clinics because it's a simple model, easy to understand, and having a limited number of options. Only there is only option on the foot, especially. But now we know that the model is wrong. Uh, the hip joint center is in the wrong position. Uh, in the article of Davis, Davis mentioned only 25 radiographic images were used for stating its regression. And now, we, from other regions, we can propose more accurate position. So the CGM relies also on a lateral one marker used to define the coronal plane of the both femur and tibia. And it's prone to wobble movement and soft tissue artifact. Uh, there are no joint constraints, uh, thus the kinematic processing allows the segment to vary in length, making the model output inadequate for the musculoskeletal software. And the foot is, uh, there is a, a few uh, information about the foot. The foot is modeled as a single rigid segment and cannot satisfy the clinical demand, uh, needing more accurate foot kinematics. And finally, maybe the, ma the one major drawback is to be considered as a black box model, which could explain the creation of uh, gate, alternative gate model like the CAS model or the IOR model. So the goal of this project was to develop, uh, to propose an evolution of the CGM that preserved the strength and address the weaknesses of the CGM. And the, the CGM too must be designed for clinical service and must be applicable to adults and children with a range of different neuromusculatory pathology or norm. From the technical point of view, the design criteria that I have to fulfill is to make the model transparent, allowing the user to understand the methodology, and to make also the model backward compatible as possible. I need to, we need to minimize the difference, and where well, we cannot minimize this difference, we need to understand and quantify the difference. So our strategy was to address X weaknesses uh, one by one, so the first stage was to reproduce the past and replicate first the CGM1, the plugging gate. And in, uh, we also proposed the CGM 1.1, that is the plugging gate as it should work. Uh, this uh, model uh, integrates clinical relevant approach that was published in the literature. And then in the stage two, we address uh, each uh, weaknesses. And uh, with the CGM 2.1, we changed the hip joint center position. The CGM 2.2 introduced the inverse kinematic solver, and in the CGM 2.3, we removed the one, and the CGM 2.4 uh, integrated a two-segment foot model instead of the single segment. So here are the different marker set of our CGM. So you may notice that the main difference uh, in marker set start from the CGM 2.3, with the use of skin cluster. So for the CGM1, the implementation uh, proposed allow to use the knee alignment device uh, that you can see on the picture on the left side uh, for calibrating the knee uh, flexion axis. Uh, it's uh, an operation done by most of uh, well-established gate lab using the CGM1 in, clin uh, we, um, in clinical routine. As an alternative to the knee alignment device, uh, with the CGM1, we now allow the use of medial knee marker while keeping the processing of the knee alignment device. And another important feature of this model is, to, is uh, the projection of the joint moment is now into the joint coordinate system. Uh, it's, uh, um, it's now a recommendation of the, of the International Society of Biomechanics. 
both CGM 2.1 and CGM 2.2 share the same Hilton Center position coming from the work of ARA published in, uh, recently in the scientific report. And for the CGM 2.2 only, the inverse kinematic optimization was introduced and the code called the solver uh, distribute in the OpenSIM API. And for the CGM 2.3, 2.4, we removed the one marker for skin cluster placed over the lateral aspect and anterior aspect of both Phi and Schenck. And finally, for the CGM 2.4, we removed uh, we, two metatarsal end markers are placed uh, defining the four foot uh, segment according the definition of the Leradini's foot model. So if you want to, I invite you, if you want to have more information about uh, the different variant of the CGM, uh, I invite you to read the chapter in the Handbook of Human Motion or to have a look at the website and the, the two articles published in Gate and Posture and Journal of Biomechanics. Great, thank you very much, um, Fabian. Um, I will now continue to describe how CGM2 can be used with Qualysys. And perhaps this is a good time to emphasize that CGM2 is an open project and it is available for anyone to use and it's available for anyone to process their, um, their C3D files with. <clears throat> but we wanted to make it as easy as possible to use it with the Qualysys system. Um, some vendors have already proposed other solutions to also make it have an easy workflow. But even I think if someone doesn't use any system that has been particularly um, prepared to use uh, CGM2, you can um, still use um, the CGM2 um, source code in general. But with the following workflows, you could do that. It's extra easy and uh, more convenient. So um, we'll discuss two different options today. One is the embedded option. So in this one, we've got the source code and everything embedded um, that you need to run into one of our gate modules. And the other option is the open workflow, which means that you as a user clone the data from the public repository and you sort of connect the pieces yourself. And the difference is that, um, I mean, first of all, base of, both of them are based on the public CGM2 source. So that's what they both have in common. So it's um, good to know that even if you're using the module, which, is where, which has the code embedded, it's still linked to a specific version of the public source of the model so that you can be assured that um, it's not a black box in that sense. Um, but the difference is with the embedded version, we supply a single installer um, that is um, essentially an add-on to our Qualysys um, QTM software. But with the open workflow, you um, do the installation manually. So you're installing Python and various other steps. Um, and then when you're finished, you can create PDF or web reports with our gate module. Um, but with the open workflow, you can only create the PDF workflow because the web report is only part of our gate module. So in summary, um, the, we have the typical gate lab in mind for the embedded workflow, because here you have control over versions, you have control over the source code because everything is in a single installer and it's compiled. So no one can accidentally make a change to the code um, that you're using for your daily operations in your gate lab. But as a researcher or um, developer, you are able to also run the open workflow um, as an alternative when you want to work on the source code, when you want to contribute yourself. And another difference is that the open workflow doesn't require any extra license at all, whereas the gate module is an add-on that you would add to your software, um, to your quality software. So those are the two routes we'll look at, and we'll focus on the embedded workflow for the moment. So how does it work to run the embedded workflow? First, you install the gate module version 1.5, which we will release in June, and it's currently going through the final stages of testing. And um, when you install it, um, it has all the required files installed. So you don't need to install Python, you don't need to install anything. And um, it, we have simply added the CGM2 model to our existing gate module. So you have the cast, option, CGM option, IOR option, so you have various marker sets available, and now as an addition, also the CGM2 marker set and um, processing. All the others rely on Visual 3D for processing, but CGM2, of course, doesn't. It relies on the um, original um, source from, uh, from CGM2. There's a marker guide included, 
and um, you simply select it as a session type and then you can also s easily switch between the different CGM versions if you want to prepare um, a comparison for example you want to know how, how would this later look like if I use the original conventional gate model conventions from CGM1 you can do so easily by just changing a drop-down menu um, just as a quick repetition here um, we're supporting the variants um, which is the replicate um, of the conventional gate model. Um, we have the version 1.1 with the medial knee marker option here, version 2.1 with the modified hip joint center, um, version 2.2 with inverse kinematics tracking. So the joints, there are some joint constraints um, and um, there's segment optimization happening. Um, then version 2.3 removes the ones. Um, so they are skin markers instead um, and some additional markers. Version 2.4 adds the extra two foot markers so that um, it has a simple two segment foot model, which is something I know that many gate users are looking for, a simple foot model with two segments. Um, and then upcoming, currently in beta testing, there are versions 2.5 and 2.6 um, in the future. And any of these can also be run um, as a lower body only version um, or full body. So what you need are Qualysis cameras. Um, force plates are not are not um, required, but um, well, of course it's recommended for full gate analysis. And for the embedded workflow, you will need our, our gate module. If you don't have our gate module today, um, contact us. We are more than happy to provide a try license so you can give it a try. One important thing to consider here or to keep in mind is that EMG processing and advanced setups like instrumented treadmills are currently not um, part of the CGM2 workflow. Um, maybe, Fabian, you could comment on uh, your thoughts on EMG um, and what the future plans are for EMG and CGM2, briefly. Oh, you're, I think uh, you're there are some yeah, applications that, should, that could be... No, sorry, fine. yeah, so there is... Um, yeah, um, so I have integrated the possibility to... to to process the EMG and to perform some basic computation with the EMG. Uh, so I think in the future that will be integrated as a as a as an extension of a PI CGM2. Yeah. And you will get access from from the QTM. Mm -hmm. So that's a future extension. I mean, you we discussed earlier that you don't see it part of as part of the core workflow. So it's essentially an, an addition. Yeah. Um, I'll keep this very short now, the workflow, and um, because uh, Vincent will show it live in a minute. Um, basically, you collect data. Um, we recommend, recommend that you crop the static trial, fill gaps. You can modify force assignments. If you have any invalid force contacts, you can mark them in each file, and then you can run the processing. And during processing, you will see the software Mocha pop up. Mocha is an open source C2D viewer and it's used here to verify the gate event. So each event will be a, one of these dots here in the time bar, and that's an, it's simply an easy and convenient way to verify that the events are identified correctly. And then you can review the report. But um, I'll hand over to um, my colleague Vincent now, um, who will present for a minute or two or um, and show the live workflow. Yes, thank you, Nils. So, um, as you can see, maybe now. Yep. Yes. So as you can uh, see, uh, I'm sharing my screen now, and that is like QTM. And uh, behind me, uh, we are like in the in the studio where we have like four plates in the middle and a few cameras around. So we're gonna do like uh, a live uh, data collection for CGM2. The first thing that you have to do when you have installed the gate module is to create a patient. Uh, so we can uh, create a patient with uh, an ID, with a secret name, and giving like a birth date to this person, um, and specifying the sex if needed. Um, then what we do, we uh, we create like a clinical gate session, like uh, usual. And what you have to do here, um, if you want to use the CGM2, is to specify a, a few things. Um, the first thing that you have to specify is the height and weight of the person. So today I'm with Stan, it's the John Doe that I just entered. Uh, so he's 185 uh, 85 and, uh, no, 
180, excuse me, 180 and 85 kilograms. You can specify also the leg length, uh, so in millimeters, so, and the knee width, the ankle width, and then uh, the offset for the shoulder, in, so it's 50, 50, and the elbow width again, uh, maybe 50, 50. So these things can be measured, but today, since we are like in a live demo, uh, I'm entering them uh, approximately. But of course, when you, are, when you have the time uh, during your, uh, your research or your clinical assessment, uh, you can do it more thoroughly and take the time to, to take the measurements. Yes, perfect. So when you're done with that, you can click on OK. And now uh, you can see you have uh, different like possibilities for a gate session. And new one, what Neil said, it's like the full body session. So CGM2 body session. So I'm going to click on that one. And uh, I'm going to press OK. And now you have the regular or the usual like uh, pane with uh, a static measurement and a gate me measurement uh, session. So the first thing that we have to do, we're gonna first maybe try to turn the system on. So as you can see, I have a few cameras. I can close the window for the trajectory editor. And we have like two video cameras that will be used when we are gonna create the web report. So if I switch to 3D, I can see Stan here. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna ask him to stand still uh, because I'm gonna record now like a uh, static recording. Yeah, so I'm using a trigger, so I'm clicking on starting the trigger. And now the static file is recorded. Uh, I can trim the file to make the analysis a bit uh, quicker. So to a few frames like that. So to making sure that all the, the markers are labeled. As you can see on the right side, uh, I have like 100% field level. So the aim was correctly applied on all the frames that are part of this range here. So now what I'm gonna ask Stan is to do, to perform a gate measurement. So I'm gonna start the recording. Yes, I want to save. So the recording will start soon. Waiting for the trigger since I'm using a trigger again. Uh, Stan, you can walk. Okay. So I use the trigger to start and stop the measurement. And now I can look at the files and uh, like Neil says, as I said earlier, it's important maybe to label the file, uh, at least to label everything entirely. So as you can see here, I'm like 100% everywhere, which is good. So this is the file with all the data, marker and you see full plate at the same time. So we are happy with this file. I can pause it, save it. And what I can do now, it's uh, go to the processing tab. Uh, we have two options, like Nils mentioned before, the web report and the PDF report. So now I'm gonna show you like uh, the process uh, when you click on uh, CGM2 web report to get a web report. And Nils will uh, uh, take over uh, when the web report will be, um, will be um, uploaded. Uh, so uh, you can maybe discuss uh, a bit more about the graphs and how it looks like. Um, yeah, maybe just uh, here you can now see the mocker popping up. Um, at the bottom you can verify the pattern of the events. Um, we seem to have a special one. No, I think that looks okay. No, no I think that looks correct. okay. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So if yeah. it's okay, you simply close um, mocker and yes then um, it will pop up for every single file, of course. And now uh, CGM2 is doing the, the heavy work of um, tracking the files and generating the reports and so on. Um, maybe a quick word on the static trial, Fabian, while we're waiting. Um, for the upper body model, would you generally recommend a T-pose or um, is it okay to do a static trial like we did today? 
uh, for the upper body model, it's better to have a T pose position because uh, it's uh, um, it's uh, the method recommended if you want to uh, locate your elbow joint center. Mm, okay, good. So because the elbow joint center is computed from only three marker. Yeah. Okay, good. So we've learned something here. Um, so next time we should record a T pose in the for the for the static trial for this particular model. But we are focusing on the lower body today. Um, so in the background, um, the CGM2 is copying um, files and um, processing them. And then when that process is completed, and because it's a web report, you can see that Vincent is already logged on to our online platform, and he can now say claim report um, to associate the report with his um, account and the report is popping up. Um, and the beauty of an online report is that I can now um, switch over again and present myself. Um, so, okay. Um, and um, I can simply refresh my browser um, and search for the John Doe report, and you can see a few seconds ago, Vincent uploaded this report, so I can open it up here. Um, today, we don't have um, time to, to focus very much on the report. Um, I'll just briefly uh, show it here, and um, we'll maybe have a separate session in the future to really focus on this report. Um, there's also some material in our Q Academy, but um, there are various things you can do here. You could create comparisons to previous data. You can um, mark, um, make annotations um, to highlight anything that is unusual, for example, um, where um, there's an increased range um, and, and similar things, and um, share the report afterwards. Um, but yeah, as I mentioned, this is something um, we'll uh, cover in depth um, in a future webinar, or you can take at our Q Academy material um, for more information, or just contact us, of course. Um, we'll now um, now that we've covered the embedded workflow, um, we'll shift our focus on the open workflow very briefly. Um, so in the open work workflow, um, we are um, starting off um, in uh, our public GitHub repository. So I can just open it up here and um, show you what it looks like. Um, and anyone can access um, our examples here and download them. And with this Quotasys CGM2 workflow, you'll find some instructions um, on how to install it. So you install Python, um, you set some environment paths, you install CGM, PyCGM2, download Mocha, and then you're ready to run with this workflow. Um, it also comes with a um, settings file for QTM. So you also have this nice interface to collect data, the same that Vincent just showed. Um, but with some less options and only for CGM2 and also um, it comes without the uh, web report. Um, but the beauty of this for developers is that um, you can access the source code. So um, if I um, process this once, um, I'm able afterwards to also simply use the command line to start processing um, in, in as well. So I can I'll process this manually now. We don't have to actually wait for it um, to to continue to um, for the full process here. But I would just like to briefly show that um, I could also use the command prompt instead. And um, we've got some uh, look, uh, some examples here in our documentation um, on how to start this from the command line. Um, if you are a developer and if you are interested in doing that. Um, I just have some problems with pasting here for some reason. Okay. Um, well, we will uh, cover this part. I think um, it's better to cover this in the written material afterwards. Um, but the bottom line is, um, and I've got a screenshot of it here <laughs> to show you um, in a better way, um, that um, developers can run this via Anaconda directly via Python. And then um, simply using this syntax here, run um, the, the processing from the command line and uh, also change the source code, contribute to the project, make pull requests, and anyone who's interested in that has the option to do that um, using the open example. Um, okay, so um, we're already ready to wrap up here. Um, half an hour goes very quickly. Um, so in summary, um, we've shown the conventional gate module to today. It's a, back, it's a backward compatible 
um, gate model that is compatible compatible with the conventional gate model one um, but it's also ready for the future with various different model options um, it's integrated into the Qualysys gate module 1.5 um, but there's also an alternative workflow available where you can run directly in um, from the command line or you can contribute and change the code yourself if you're a developer or a researcher. Um, we will have resources available on the webinar page, um, information about the gate module. Um, you will receive a link to the GitHub um, example for the open workflow that doesn't require any license that you can start with today. It also includes files and um, we um, yeah we're really happy that you joined us today. Please stay online for a little bit um, to answer while we answer some more of your questions. And um, thank you for joining us. And also before you leave, I would like to point out that we have another webinar. This time it's in two weeks because in many places um, there's a public holiday next Thursday. So um, in two weeks, my colleague Patrick Armstrong will um, perform a running analysis live in a in a webinar. Um, we'll now take a quick look at questions. Um, if there's anything flagged that uh, we should answer here um, together. Um, so if we just quickly review here, one of the questions is um, a yeah, very good question. Yes, um, aren't the anthropometric dimensions measured from the marker positions, knee width and so on? Um, that's a very good point. Maybe I give an initial answer and then Fabien can correct me. Um, of course, um, if you are using the medial knee marker, the, they are taken from the markers. Um, but uh, for backward compatibility with uh, CGM1, we would recommend entering them if you can. Is that correct, Fabia? Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. correct. It's because I want to 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 keep um, to keep working with the native processing of the CGM1 and the native uh, CGM1 want to input the anthropometric parameter. Uh, so, but it's true that we can. In the future, maybe I, we can replace uh, by a, an option to measure the, the the knee width or the ankle width from medial marker directly. Mm -hmm. And how is it with the um, with the neck length? Is that also mandatory for all versions of the CGM? Um, for the or is, is it only for the CGM one yeah. mandatory? Yeah. It's uh, it's a, exactly the same the same processing for the leg length. So you need to compute the leg length from the AS the anterior superior iliac spine uh, from the ASI to the medial ankle marker. And that's done. Uh, that is uh, always taken from. Manuals. And that's always taken from the anthropometric from the input. Uh, from the measurement. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it's not taken from the C3 uh, from the 3D data. No. Okay. Yeah. No. So that. Would be maybe some uh, contribution or suggestions for the future um, to uh, have an option to also, if it's maybe not entered, to take it from the data. But of course, I, I realize there are cases when patients are not standing with the knees straight, um, where you actually have to take that into account, um, and you can't just measure directly from the ASIS to the ankle, um, but you have to yeah. factor in some crouch, for example. And um, I guess that's one of the reasons for for requiring this as an input. Mm. I'll take a quick look here if we uh, have any other questions that um, are still open, but I think um, we have a few that, that just came in, came in in the last seconds. Um, yeah, exactly. Someone made already made the point. If someone can't keep the leg straight, um, taking it from the markers wouldn't be accurate. How many cameras need to be installed to get measurements, which we just took in the trial today? Um, I would say the minimum um, eight cameras um, is my recommendation. We have some customers um, doing lower body gate only with six cameras, but um, it is very challenging, especially if you have a person helping out. And then if you have patients where you have an assistant person, I would tend to more recommend 10 to 12 cameras um, because some of the cameras will be blocked by the person assisting the patient. Does that match your experience, Fabia? Yeah. Yeah, it's better, especially especially if you work if you want to work with the CJM 2.3, where I put an uh, extra marker skin cluster. Uh, it's it's better to have more more than eight cameras, uh, because sometimes during the swing uh, the swing um, uh, the swing period, you, you may have some occlusion uh, for the anterior marker anterior tibia marker. So yeah. it's better to have more cameras. But yeah. you can keep working with uh, six cameras for the CGM one on for the lower limb, especially. Yeah, 
yeah, true. So it really depends on which variant you're using and um, exactly also. Um, then um, there was a question about um, if you can measure the, float, uh, the flat foot, <laughs> um, basically, um, can we take measurements about flat foot on the system? I mean, by, we have an option to either um, yeah. say, um, we assume that the, fat, that the foot is flat on the floor in the, um, in the static trial, or yeah. you can uncheck this option. And then we are, um, for example, we are able to measure equinus as well, where the foot is not foot on the, uh, flat on the ground. Um, maybe that's part of the question. Or maybe if the question was about um, flat foot, um, I mean, obviously where the foot is collapsed, um, is that something that you could measure with the um, the option where the where you have the two segment foot model, Fabio? Where, I mean, you basically have a foot that is very, I mean, uh, rather yeah. than this, it's, it's, it's like this. And so, if you have, what you have to do for, uh, for that uh, is because um, you need to place the ill marker, the calcaneus marker, at the same position, uh, at the same height uh, of the toe marker. Uh, is because it's um, it's used for align the longitudinal axis of the foot. So if you have a flat foot position, so you can enable the flat foot option. That is, the, I don't remember what is the name of this option in QTM. Uh, but if you are in a nakedness position, you need to put the in marker at the same height as the toe marker. Yeah, that's also a native processing of the CGM one. So those settings are here. Um, yeah. But if you are using the two-segment foot, if you're measuring the two foot segments relative to each other, I guess if someone yeah. has a very flat, flat foot, um, you are able to see that from the angle between the, um, sort of in the sagittal plane, the angle between the forefoot and the rear foot. Um, yeah, that's exactly, that's exactly the same thing. Yeah. Uh, so you have well, with the CGM 2.4 and the two-segment foot model, the toe marker is on the, um, on the basis of the second metatarsal, and you need to place it at the same. Um, um, you need to place the ill marker at the same height of the um, of the toe marker. And for the forefoot, uh, you will uh, is um, according to Leardini's model. Uh, you will uh, you will um, define the plane from the second beta, uh, the basis of the second metatarsal to the first head and fifth head metatarsal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank and you. And you will have an, an offset between the hind foot and the offs and the forefoot. Yeah. Um, okay. We have more questions coming in. Maybe just uh, for everyone, um, we'll end here at, uh, at in at forty five. Um, so, in about eight minutes, um, we'll do our best to answer some more questions, and we will. Um, but we will, of course, um, come back by via email to any questions that are still open. So. Um, if you have asked a question, bear with us for a few more minutes and we'll try to answer. Um, so there was another question about uh, taking um, anthropometric measurements directly from the markers. I guess especially the leg length is relevant here um, because uh, it means losing time. And if the patient can stand up straight, of course, it's an option to get it from markers. And it's something we've implemented in other marker sets in the past. So maybe we take this as an input for the future to have the option uh, to also measure the um, leg length and other anthropometric parameters from markers as an option. So anyone who, who doesn't want to do it, or if you have a cr patient in crouch, um, you would enter them manually instead. I think that's a good feedback. Um, then um, we had a question to compare the two segment foot with the Oxford foot model. Um, is it maybe Fabio, you can comment on that? Uh, yeah, that's. I, I have a comment about the the, the, the introduction of the of a two segment foot model. So we need. To, um, so we have to keep in mind that uh, uh, the goal of the of the CGM two uh, foot model is not to. Uh, um, how can I say? It's um. Oh yeah, no, I rephrase. Um, just you have to keep in mind that the the hind foot model, the hind foot model, it's a. Uh, uh, due to a, a backward uh, compatibility, it's work exactly exactly like the CGM1. So you will have the same uh, kinematic from the CGM1 and the CGM2.4 for the iron foot. It's a relative angle between the iron foot and and the tibia marker. But if you're the goal of the seat of the 
CGM to uh, food model is not to repli uh, not to uh, um, sorry is not to um, to to replace the hog for food model, especially if your question clinical question is about the food model. So I recommend if you have a question directly uh, focusing on the food and the food kinematics i recommend to use a multi-segment food model like the oxford food model the heidelberg model or the milwaukee model there are plenty of food models but if you want primary information about the food and especially the misalignment between the the forefoot and the hind foot you can use the cgm 2.4 for that yeah mm -hmm. Hope exactly. it's clear, it's compromise. <laughs> I think that is also what I've heard from many customers. Yeah. It's good to have a compromise where you don't need to so place reason, 25 yeah. markers on each foot, but you have at least some information yeah. about how the forefoot is moving relative to the rear foot. So like you said, if there's a specific question about foot segments, it's better to use a multi-segment foot model, but to get at least some information, exactly. um, what we often see is about pronation, supination, um, inversion, eversion. Um, if you treat it as a single segment, of course, that information is very limited. Um, but by using two segments, it will be improved. Um, so um, there's a question about adding inverse kinematics and inverse dynamics um, in the future. And actually it's already available. So um, the uh, version 2.3 is using inverse kinematics and upwards and all versions include inverse dynamics. 2.2, sorry. 2.2 is adding the inverse kinematics. So there are constraints in the joints and um, also the um, inverse dynamics is available in all of the modules uh, models. So um, joint or yeah. is joint um, moments and power are output. Um, so um, then there is a question about joint angle normalization. Um, and I think that's always a quite an interesting topic um, because some uh, prefer to normalize joint angles, for example, by the static trial and others don't. Um, as far as I know, the CGM2 does it like similar to other modules. There's no normalization except for the foot. So, um, um, or is, is there any option to basically set the static trial as a zero baseline for any of the, of the joint angles, Fabian? Yeah, yeah, there is no normalization of the joint angle. Yeah, no, okay, so it's not available and maybe I, my personal view is that um, the danger with normalization based on the static trial, for example, is always that you cannot replicate the exact position in the static trial um, every time. So if you want to compare okay. maybe one session and another session, if you have zeroed everything by the static trial, um, you are basically having a different baseline in different sessions. That's why I also um, very much agree with the approach of having no option to um, zero except for the foot flat option or the normalized foot to static trial option where um, we can use this to avoid any um, effects from having um, different marker heights at the feet. Um, then um, perhaps the final question for us, um, will the hind foot give you correct ankle kinematics if you have a midfoot break? that the CGM would display as dorsiflexion? Fabia, I think you answered that question already because the hind foot segment is working to be backward compatible with a CGM foot. So yeah. I think yeah. it would have the same limitation, correct? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, okay. So that would be another case for a more advanced foot model that in that be, case. Yeah. yeah. All right, good. Um, there were some questions for, um, just to wrap up about the um, uh, web, uh, the PDF report as well. So um, I've generated one here in this session. Um, I'll just want to briefly show that one question was, does it show the temporal spatial parameters? And the answer is yes, they are part of the PDF. Um, then all the joint angles are there as well. Um, and it's all stored in a single um, PDF file and um, very easily accessible. And um, that is that option is available both in the embedded version and in the open version. And um, um, yeah, I think that's just, I just want to briefly show this. Um, yeah, then I think we're coming to the end here. Um, I thank you very much for attending um, this webinar today. Um, stay safe and stay healthy, everyone. Um, I hope we'll meet each other um, soon. 
uh, when it's possible again. And until then, um, stay tuned for more webinars. Thank you very much for Fabien uh, for helping out um, with your um, insights about the CGM2 today. And thank you also for the team in uh, Sweden um, and Libor uh, also to help with the chat and the live demos. Thank you, and uh, we'll keep this open. So um, if you have another question popping up, um, we'll capture it for the next five minutes or so. And um, other than that, thank you and bye-bye. <laughs>